Hi, Joe Rossiter here with this Native Instruments tutorial video. In this beginner's guide to making grime bass lines, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of Blocks, a reactor-based modular synth environment by building this heavyweight bass instrument from the ground up. You'll learn how to patch your own basic modular synth setup in software and also pick up a few tricks to help you design simple, solid bass lines suitable for grime, garage and other bass music genres. You can apply the techniques to any traditional subtractive synth, of course, but by building your own instrument from individual components, you'll gain a deeper understanding of how a synth actually works. So to start, I'll open Reactor 6 and I'll call up the Blocks new patch to start from scratch. Click here to enable editing, and then we'll select the Edit Panel Structure button here, so we can see both of Blocks editing areas together. Unlike a regular synthesizer with a pre-configured signal path, a modular system lets you patch together any number of individual components, such as oscillators, filters, envelopes, modulators, and more. Down the left here, these individual components are called blocks, which you drag in from the library side pane. There are loads of blocks to choose from, including many components from other native instruments plugins. In terms of the interface, you connect these blocks together here in the bottom structure view, and you tweak module parameters in this top panel view. First, I'm going to delete these macro knobs, macro switches, the clock and the scope blocks, just to keep things simple. Grime bases are often created using subtractive synthesis, so we'll need an oscillator module to generate a harmonically rich waveform. Let's drag in this classic, fat-sounding Monarch oscillator block. Then we'll want a filter to reduce and remove the waveform's harmonics, to alter and sculpt the oscillator's timbre. This beefy Monarch low-pass filter will do just that. And then I'll drag in a Bento Box VCA, which is an amplifier that will control the oscillator's volume. If your blocks patch becomes disorganized, it turns into the virtual equivalent of tangling yourself up in a confusing mess of patch cables. So I'll stay organized and reorder my blocks, both in the structure and panel view, just to keep things in a logical order. To connect modules in the structure view, click and drag a virtual cable out from a blocks output and drop this connection onto another block's input port. This first note in module is receiving the note data from my MIDI keyboard, which is indicated by this flashing red light, and then funnels that note data out to other blocks. So I'm going to plumb that pitch data into the oscillator, then I'll patch the oscillator's output to the filter's input, then I'll pipe the filter's output to the amplifier's input, and I'll route the amplifier's output into the left and right inputs of the final levels block, which is the final stereo output. And there we can hear our oscillator signal, but even though I can play my MIDI keyboard to change pitch, the notes carry on indefinitely. So let's use a Monarch ADS envelope module to shape the volume of each new note I press. I'm going to pipe the note in's gate signal into the envelope's gate input. Then I'll patch the envelope's output into the VCA's mod A input. These mod inputs and outputs are used to route inaudible control signals. Now, once I apply modulation amount in this VCA using this slider, MIDI notes cause this envelope to modulate the amplifier's level every time a new note on message is received. This bouncing collar around the VCA level helps you visualize the envelope's influence over amplitude. Once again, I'm going to tidy things up and reorder these blocks in a logical fashion. So now we've patched together our basic synthesizer, but it doesn't sound anything special just yet. So let's choose our main waveform. I'm going to choose a grime staple, which is the square wave. And I'll turn range down by an octave, because we're making a low bass sound. To shape the sound's volume envelope over time, I'm going to dial in minimum attack and sustain, and then a decay of around 45 milliseconds. I can also turn up the note in block's glide amount, so each note bends into the next for that signature drunken laziness synonymous with grime records. Now to the filter. As it's inspired by a certain synth filter from the 70s known for its aggression, the Monarch filter really does give simple waveforms lots of grunt and flavour. Especially when you dial in feedback and overload the filter. Then juggle that with cutoff and resonance settings. 
And this is essentially what grime bass lines are made of. They're very simple waveforms that sound fat. So there's our basic patch. This mono synth could work well on its own as a simple grime sub bass layer, especially when we play in MIDI notes that exaggerate the note glide. Of course, we could have just used a traditional subtractive synth to create this sound, it's nothing special. But the beauty of modular systems like this is that you can freely mix and match a versatile array of modules in any way you like. So let's complement this raw analog bass tone with a harsher digital waveform to create a more interesting mid-range and top element. To control the level of these two oscillators independently, I'm going to add a mixer block in here. This one has four stereo inputs. I'm going to patch this oscillator's VCA output into the first pair of mixer inputs. And then I'll pipe this mixer output into the final level output block. With this block you can have up to four independent stereo outputs. In the panel view I'll drag this mixer to the end of the rack. I'll now drop in a different oscillator block. And to patch it in, I'll trigger it by input pitch again. Then connect that to a different filter here. Then I'll funnel its output into an amplifier. And patch that into the mixer's second stereo input. And yet again, I'll modulate the VCA with an amplitude envelope. As I did before, I'll pipe the note in's gate output into this envelope's gate input. Then I'll route the envelope's output into the amplifier's mod A input. Another quick tidy up in the panel view first. Then I'll apply the envelope's modulation over amplitude here with this slider. So now to tweak this digital layer, I'll raise its pitch by a couple of octaves. I'll raise the signal's attack, just to slowly introduce the tone at the start of each new note. And then I'll play around with oscillator settings, just to get that sort of synthetic whistle component, which really suits grime and bass music bass lines. And going even further into the world of modular, you can process either oscillator with any number of modules. I'm going to drag three effects blocks here into the structure view. I'll go for the morph filter, driver distortion, and rounds delay. What I'll do is patch these into the second oscillator's signal path, but leave the first oscillator unprocessed just to keep that solid. And again, I'll tidy up in the structure view and reorder blocks in the panel view to give us a logical layout that corresponds to our signal flow. And just to wrap up, one of the best things about modular synthesis is the anything goes approach to patching and experimentation. I'm going to try routing the first oscillator's output into the second oscillator's FM input. I'll just apply a bit of mod depth, and there we've instantly cabled an interesting change in timbre, something that you might not be able to do with a synthesizer that has a fixed architecture. So here's my two oscillator synth, comprised of a dry, fat square wave providing solid low end, and a slightly thinner, weirder, processed top layer, giving the sound mid-range bite and flavour. Hopefully these techniques have given you a small glimpse into the endless modular world of blocks. You can now cable together your own choice of blocks to build unique instruments and effects that suit your own style of electronic music. Anyway, that's all from me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Native Instruments YouTube channel for more tutorials like this one.